Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Filled Crypto Channel. Today we're going to look at Cardano and its strength against the other major cryptocurrencies. So if you like the sound of that and you find some value from the content, make sure you hit the like button here, subscribe there, hit that bell notification icon over here. I'll stop being funny. Let's dive in. Over to coin market cap with our coin market capitalizations, 1.4 trillion for the total market caps. And Cardano is sitting at around 43 billion. Binance at number four position, 45, which leaves us with Ethereum at 256 billion and Bitcoin at 642 billion. Now I'm bringing this up because we're going to look at the dominance in just a sec. Uh, this is the dominance for Cardano and just at some levels where it may drop back to and give us a good buying opportunity if we haven't filled our position just yet. But first up, let's have a look at some of the news coming through from uh, staking pools. Cardano hits new milestones surpassing 650,000 staking addresses. So it's been an eventful three weeks for the fifth most valuable cryptocurrency by market cap. In that time, it has added more than 50,000 new staking addresses, an increase of more than 8% since the beginning of June. Ada reported its last milestone surpassing 600,000 staking addresses. So this just shows me that there is a, still a lot of interest coming into the space, even at these, uh, I guess, bearish times for cryptocurrency. So I like the feel of that and I like the look of that. The numbers are showing that people are still interested, even though the price is uh, well off its all-time highs. The other thing to note with the staking pools is uh, it's just so easy to use. And if you are thinking about staking your ADA, there's a link to the Investor Accelerator staking pool down below. Go and check that out. There's a, a video on how to do that as well. Very, very simple to set up. Just like I saw on one of these Reddit comments here, 167 comments. This post has just mentioned how easy it is. And from my experience using several other cryptocurrencies, whether it was Masternodes, which was the in thing through 2017, now it's become staking. And there are a lot of cryptos which made it very difficult. Their wallets were down. Uh, you always had to update the wallets. Then you had to re-stake your uh, whatever crypto it was to get the rewards. But Cardano makes that process a lot, a hell of a lot easier. And just like this comment here says, Cardano has made this whole thing easy as can be. And now I'm way less interested in investing in other coins. I think this goes across the board for a lot of new people as well. It is one of the most easiest cryptocurrencies to stake. And so I like that they've made this process, the first thing that they've really brought out so easy. That's a really nice, uh, I guess, way in and lead in to the smart contracts which are coming. And so if we don't, if we happen to get a delay on the smart contracts, God forget, God forbid, uh, I would see that that might affect the price and I would just be using that time as good buying opportunity. So really all I'm saying here is if we do get some delays, some sort of bad news, personally, the way I'm looking at it is I don't see it affecting Cardano long term, but it may affect the price short term, which is a good buying opportunity. So I'm preparing myself for that possibility because it's technology and we happen to see that tech is often delayed. If that's the case, good buying opportunity. I've got the patience. I can write it out. Looking at Bitcoin price, we're at 34,000. We're going to get to the dominance and other uh, Cardano charts in just a moment against smart contracts, other smart contract cryptocurrencies. But for now, Bitcoin is just trending sideways. We've looked at this many times before with our uh, Wyckoff analysis and GAN analysis. We've looked at areas of potential buying opportunities with our fear and greed index. Does this weigh over into Cardano? We'll check out that on the chart in a moment. But we have other measures which I'm looking for for uh, Cardano. Overall, it's been pretty strong. What I'm looking at here are the waves. So this is the potential of our five waves if we're looking at some sort of Elliott wave analysis, one, two, three, four, five. And generally after a fifth wave, we get a corrective phase, an A, B, C. Now, don't pay attention to where these are lining up. It doesn't really matter. The point that I'm waiting for is a A, B, C to get back into the market. So I think that might just hold up the price for a little bit, maybe drop it a little bit. At least that's what I'm hoping for because I'm just trying to... Uh, see what's happening next. That's essentially all we can do with technical analysis. So if I get that, I'm pretty comfortable with any sort of dominance. Remember, this is the market cap dominance, which we look at here for Bitcoins at 43%, ETH at 18%, 
Cardano is at around 3.06%. So anything in this two to three-ish percent zone, I like. And I think this may drop back a little bit because we are starting to uh, start to, we've got a little downtrend here on the dominance and we're not getting the same move up like we did through uh, January into March, into February, basically. So that could lead to ADA having just a little bit of a pullback in dominance, which also may show up in the Bitcoin value. Bitcoin taking off, that's part of our theory. We look uh, looking at Bitcoin getting stronger over this next stage. And if that's the case, then potentially get a fallback on the ADA BTC price because they tend to bleed. And if it doesn't, that just shows that uh, Cardano is holding up extra strong. Now, why would I think that Cardano will get a bit more of a pullback from the current pullback that we've already seen of about 30%, now currently sitting at sort of 20, 25%. Well, we've hit 50% already. Get this brush. So this range to the major low, and that's the 50% level that you can see right here. So focus on the, this is the larger time frame. This is just GAN analysis. So we're looking at 50% hit. That's generally a uh, like a resistance point. Fantastic, we've hit that. If we get a pullback, then our next 50% zone for the major range, the major bullish range, is at around 2,700 sats. Still sits us in a good solid position. So if I get a pullback on the BTC pair, what I can see happening next is BTC going up in dollar value, which might draw some of the altcoins back, including Cardano. And Ethereum might also move up as well. So uh, ADA ETH, as we can see here, has had a very good run from January into February, which was the previous all-time high before it took off again. And at the moment, it's just starting to hold up against Ethereum, right? And we've also hit, look at that, 50% level, all-time high to pretty much all-time low. This is a bit of a spike. So I'm going to use data that it's actually pulled up against. And we've hit 50% and had a pullback. I don't know if we'll get back to these levels because that was quite strong volume but maybe we just see a little bit of a trending into this zone. In that case, I'm still very bullish on ADA. Uh, I'm, I'm bullish on ADA long term as well. But just looking at the prices, I think this could be an okay entry. I'm looking for that. I'm not saying we're going to get it. And my ideas could change if I see other uh, structures forming at these levels because we are still sitting above previous resistance. So we're, we've come back and sit, sat on that. So that could hold us up. It's at a bit of an indecisive period at the moment because we didn't get the push through that we were hoping for last week. Strong volume, push up, and then back into these levels. So that's slightly bearish. We are on a weekly time frame. So if that was a little confusing, all I'm really looking at here is what is Cardano ETH going to do from this stage? Because Ethereum is still strong, right? And if it happens just to hold up in this level, no problems. We don't get this. We just hold in this level, no dramas. BTC, maybe we get a little bit of a pull down, just drops a little bit, no problems. That's a healthy correction. So I'm looking for a healthy correction on the BTC pair. I'm looking for a healthy correction on the ETH pair. And if that's the case, then that's going to drop the dominance as well. So we'll see a healthy correction on the dominance pair as well. That's going to be one of my first signals and I may even purchase some ADA at that point. So really, I don't think ADA has finished its downtrend just yet. And I'm waiting for the next entry. And I'm showing that from the dominance ADA ETH and the ADA BTC. All right. So they look like they could have a little bit of a fallback because Bitcoin is still going up. Now, if you look at ADA USD, looks like it'd probably just be in this zone. This zone seems fine. A dollar, dollar forty, gets a push down here. Crazy. Great buying opportunity. But if it just stays in this zone here because BTC is rising. So the dollar value of Bitcoin is rising, but it may be falling in its ADA BTC pair. No problems. I'm going to be buying it with the Bitcoin that I was buying at the lows of the Bitcoin lows. So that's how all of these pieces of the altcoin space come together for me, where I'm looking at trying to uh, capture low or cheap Bitcoin and then wait for the opportunity for these altcoins to drop in their BTC value buy up these alts at these lower prices and then ride those up so that I gain even more BTC value rather than just buying these alts at whatever price they're at. I'm hoping and looking at them falling a little further, maybe 20 or so percent, and then riding those up 
into whatever gains that we go for and maybe another 100% on my BTC, which would potentially mean even more on my fiat value. Having a look at just another couple of uh, smart contract platforms, we're going to look at ADA versus Binance. It's finding some resistance at uh, the level here of 0 0.005, but it's still holding up reasonably well after such a massive drop. This was when Binance went on that big run. So we're just weighing up are there other possibilities, are there other coins that we should be invested in rather than Cardano? And right now Cardano is looking okay against BNB. Also against DOT, it's just gone on a massive tear since April. It has just left DOT for dead. And this was the last top we were looking at and the little pullback was next to nothing. It, it barely even had a chance to rest before taking off again. So we're now at these levels and what I want to see from here is more solid weeks up with dot falling. If I don't get that, then I think we're probably coming to a top and then it's dot's turn to move. But dot has looked very, very weak. And just because it's a weak crypto at the moment doesn't mean that it's going to be something that is going to take off later. That's kind of what people think, but it doesn't mean that. It just could mean that it's a weak cryptocurrency and it, it won't take off. We just don't know. And for now, I'm just waiting to see what happens with Ada dot. At the moment, Ada is still the strongest out of uh, the smart contracts and then also Ada Sol. So Ada Sol is pretty much trending sideways. It had a move out, so it gained some strength against Solana, fell back a little bit, and now we're just waiting to see. So I've been in this range for about three and a half weeks. And for Ada Sol, what we want to see is more accumulation at this zone, potentially not a breakdown of the lows, but a break up of these highs. And that's obviously going to be a strengthening Ada against Solana. doesn't mean Solana has to go down. It just means ADA is outperforming Solana to get this move to the highs. To recap Cardano, it is looking very strong. The dollar value is looking good. Just remember that the dollar value can hold up at these levels between that dollar, dollar 40 because Bitcoin is rising. And if that's the case, then it's possible that the Cardano BTC pair will fall. In which case, I'm waiting for this zone to come in somewhere in this 2,000 to 3,000 Satoshis before I start to pile in some of that Bitcoin I bought at lows to then increase my Bitcoin holdings as Cardano at some point in the future begins to head out of this low. So that's what I'm looking for at the moment. This doesn't mean it has to happen either. This is just what I'm looking for. It is possible that these cryptos all begin to head down as well. So that's adding another factor into the whole mix. We're not going to worry with that too much. The whole idea here is that we want to be ensuring that our cryptos that we have bought, our altcoins are increasing in their BTC value. Otherwise, there's no point in holding them and we're better off just holding Bitcoin to reduce our downside risk. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you have any questions about it. I know it can be a bit tricky to begin to understand how all these cryptos are inter intertwine with each other and how the risks work. So leave your comments down below and we'll have a look at it in future videos as well. Otherwise, follow me on Instagram where I've got daily Q&As talking about this and many other things in the crypto and investing space. Also, Twitter, plenty of good stuff over there. Link to that is down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, like the video up, bell notification icon and stake your Cardano with the Investor Accelerator pool. You can find a link to that down below and a tutorial guide on how to do that. Also, Monday is the launch of the Investor Accelerator Lite. So if you guys want to jump on board with that, make sure you check out the link in the description as well to secure your place in the top 500, which will get a, a strong lifetime discount on the monthly Patreon membership to the new TIA Lite. Until then, have more fun to get more done.